Hello everybody, this is Tanya Viet with AAE Glass. How is everybody doing today? Today we have something special. It's an impromptu Sunday video. I know you guys are used to the Saturday videos, um, but I went for a Sunday today. This is an amazing, easy, quick, very low cost project to make that comes out fantastic. Uh, I love them so much that I thought I, thought I would show it. These are six by six inch plates. We're using the big mouth paints, the simple screens, which are trademarked by AE Glass, and also a little bit of Easy Fire enamel. These are super, super cool to make, very addicting because they don't take long. I've made all three of these in about 45 minutes. Awesome for sellers. You can put whatever image you want on there. Um, very, very excited to show this to you guys. So if you are not part of our email list please go to aaeglass.com and sign up for our newsletter because this is where all the supplies and the firing schedules will be guys all right before we get started i'll just kind of show you a few of these here and since this is a free video we don't have multiple camera angles and professional editing like we do with the paid one so um we're just going to go quick and we're going to do one camera angle and it's going to be the overhead shot and i'm thrilled with that because i don't have to have any makeup on and you don't have to see my face I could be sitting here in my pajamas. You will never know. All right. First of all, we have this one right here. It's called the bird on the wire. And we're going to be doing that background uh, today. And then we also have this um, sunset tree with a bear tree. Notice how glossy that is on top. I'm kind of moving this because there's a glare in here, guys. So I've worked for the last half hour trying to get rid of it. It's the best that I can do. Um, so that's super cool. So we're going to do this one. And this is the same as bird on the wire, except we just flip the design and this one's a little less paint, which I'll describe. So this video is only really going to be about 30 minutes at most. Um, but really notice the firing on these and something about this bird one. I actually, I have to give this credit to my sister. She came down to help me last week because I've been so slammed and I cried and begged her to come help me pretty much. And so um, she was helping me make these samples and then she made this and she said, oh, it's too dark. I said, no, that is just screaming for a bird on the branch. So then I went and made the simple screen for it. And I, I don't know, something about it. I don't mean to be all artsy, but it just says so much to me, like just waiting for the dawn there. I don't know. But so I'm digging it. And that's what I'm going to show you guys. Uh, make sure you go to aaeglass.com and uh, watch this free video along with several others that are free. And all the supply lists are listed there. We thank you for support. And uh, if you guys keep buying, I'll keep supplying. Wow, that was cheesy. I meant supplying the videos. <laughs> All right, why don't we just get right into it? I mean, I think this is exciting, but it's too... Oh, you know what I want to do? I totally want to show you guys um, some other ones. Let me just show you, because this is really uh, super awesome for you sellers. So, and they're so quick and easy and so unique. So that's a turtle. This has multiple colors. If you guys like this video, I will continue with this um, and show you guys, you know, other ways that I do this. But I want to hear on Facebook if you love it. Tell me if you want a second video, just a short one. Uh, this octopus one is super cool. It's, uh, if you can believe it, that is Big Mouth Paints. And there's like a, it looks like almost like a wood grain in the background. And then we've got some frit in here. So I'll just kind of show you exactly how I made these. This is the new octopus screen. Um, this is one of my favorites. You see some wave textures in there. And um, that's the fish. And then this is the new turtle. It's called the Ornate Turtle. Uh, and again, this is just screen printing on top. You don't have to screen print with black. Here you can see I've done it with white, uh, easy fire. And then we also have this brown and there's also green and mixed there. So I can show you guys that uh, in a couple weeks. If everyone likes this, I'll do another one and we'll just keep going. I'm super addicted to this right now because I just think it's so easy. And also these are slumped into just a bullseye square slumper. That's a cool one with a Nautilus shell using big mouth paints. I mixed a lot of that. And then here's another one, ginkgo leaf. Right guys, is that cool or what? With some really cool background. So I'll keep going with this. Let's see how it goes. Simple screens are super easy, super, super easy. Um, and that's what I like about this. So, um, and I will give you a firing schedule for the paints. It's two firings. You're gonna paint first, fire, full fuse. I'll give you the schedule because it's a specific, specific, schedule that you want to use um, to make these paints really mature. Look how glossy and bright. I mean, right now I have the lights off in the room just to take the glare down and they're still awesomely vibrant. So, um, and then just easy fire, you know, black enamel. So why don't we get rocking and rolling guys? This is going to be quick and it's going to be awesome. So get ready. 
All right, guys, here we go. This is just a six by six inch uh, bullseye white opal. You want to work on a light color glass. I prefer white, French vanilla, uh, Celadon is nice, cream, warm white, you get the idea. Uh, color, light color glass will reflect colors. So we don't want anything dark, although the paints will definitely work on dark paint. I think you'd like it with uh, lighter glass. So we're going to have this, which is a six by six. Um, so these are super convenient for all size kilns. And then I'm going to have a piece of clear Tecta, which will go underneath. I'll show that at the end. And that will be because we need to have six millimeters of glass, which is two layers, guys, okay? I'm using Big Mouth Paints. I love them. They're exclusively by aeglass.com. There's a lot more in the jar. They're mixed to a smoother consistency, which I absolutely love. Um, we use them for paint pouring, and uh, I just love them. I love them a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So um, that's what we're going to do. All right, now I'm also using these paint ponces, which are available on aaeglass.com. Guys, they come with a set of four, all different sizes. I love them. I've been using them for about a year. They're super cheap. Uh, they wa I wash them out. I reuse them. I haven't had any fall apart on me yet, and I just think it's great for your buck, which is about four bucks a pack. Super cheap. Grab a couple if you can, if you're able, because then I like to have a few so I can just kind of play with the colors. And if I want to, like, rinse out, a if I have a black on here and I don't want to go rinse it out, dry it, you know, get another one. So get a few of these if you can. And the colors that I'm ex using exactly uh, are in the newsletter. So if you're not, also the firing schedules will be there. Firing schedules are very, very important. Because did I mention that I'm giving you a firing schedule to slump and fire the enamel on at the same exact time? That's right, guys. You heard it right here. Same exact time. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to prime the glass. The glass is super glossy. There's a smoother side and then there's a uh, kind of a bumpier side with bullseye glass. We're going to go on the smoother side and we're just going to, just like you're painting your home, we're going to prime it, okay? Do this with a very light color. Sand or white is my preference. Now, as I'm sitting here filming, I am by myself here, guys, in the studio and I have realized that my sand color is down at the other end of the studio, which is a long way away. So I'm going to just use this uh, summer sun, but I do prefer sand or white. Okay, so these paints do not react, so you don't have to worry anything about that. Um, we're just gonna put this on here. Now, we're not looking for beauty here, we're just looking to get a primer on here so we can dry it and add our design layer. If you do this, your paints will then stick to the glass. Otherwise, if you just try to paint on glossy glass, I'm sure many of you know this already, it'll just look blotchy and streaky, and that's not what we're trying to do here, okay? So, now, don't not too thick. If your paint cracks in front of you, you are way too thick, and that will come up um, in the, in the, after it's fired, and then it will be hard to screen print over it. We want a perfectly smooth, glossy top, okay? It's going to look spongy. It's going to look grainy. Let it. This is just a primer. That's it. Now, what I want to do is, after priming, I want this to be completely dry. If you add a design layer of paint on top of here and this paint is still wet, you're going to pull up a big spot with the sponge. Very frustrating. I've done that. So, you want to dry this. You can let it air dry, which will take maybe an hour, hour and a half, or do what I do. Grab a blow dryer and just blow dry it. I have timed it. It takes about a minute and 15 seconds. You don't want a thick layer on here, guys. You can still see the white through here. It's just, you know, it's just to, so it gives it some tooth, something to grab onto. Don't use a heat gun when drying this. You'll crack the glass from thermal shock. So just blow dry it and then come on back and add your second layer. I'm going to do that off camera. Uh, blow dry is across the room. And like I said, I am here by myself with no assistant today. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we go with painting the design layer. Look, guys, I do not paint. I'm not a painter whatsoever. I'm just a creative person, okay? So if you are a painter out there, I'm going to get this out of the way, um, you'll be laughing at what I'm about to do. But this is super simple. So if you guys are following along with me right now, or at some point, you probably will follow along, uh, just do what I do, and then you'll kind of branch out on your own. But just know that all those awesome plates that I made before were kind of, um, they were done this way, okay? So... I'm going to start with deep red. We're going to have some orange, summer sun, and then marigold, which is on your list. And then I'm going to end with the dark blue. 
Now, just to make this easier, just because I have a small space with the camera, I'm just going to dump some of this onto my paper. You guys can use a piece of glass or a palette. Uh, I'm a little limited. Plus, I like to mix the colors. So that's a really good point to make is that you can absolutely mix Big Mouth paint colors and they will fire the mix that you have. There's no cadmium or selenium. These are food safe guys, which are cool. And, um, you know, the enamel is not food safe. We could, we'll talk about that when we screen print. But anywho, uh, that's it. So when you mix the colors, it's all good. They'll, they'll show up and um, I kind of do that. So what I do is I start with my a new ponce and I'm going to start with deep red. I've got that summer sun that I used um, to uh, put that primer down. I'm actually going to use that for the actual sun on the piece. So let me just kind of put that aside. Okay, so first, super simple, guys. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't have to be hard, does it? I come up with a lot of stuff. Of, I've, I've got, do you guys know I've got, I've done like 38 intervie um, interviews. What am I talking about? Uh, videos, guys, all brand new techniques. Um, all just kind of, you know, using this crazy brain of mine. Um, and you know what? A lot of them are complicated. A lot are easy. But this one is just really enjoyable. And anybody at any level can do this and come out with a professional looking piece. So blah, blah, blah. I'm just putting my deep red in. Remember, we're going for that sunset. Let's remind everybody that this is what we're doing here. Get that glare out of there. Okay. All right. So this is deep red. And remember, as these dry, they're going to get chalky. Now, you don't want to add too much paint. If you crack the paint, it will crack uh, after the firing. And then it will be difficult to uh, screen print over because we want this nice and smooth so we don't have any bumps or ridges to catch the screen print on. And that is with the simple screens. So now I'm going to kind of mix this deep red and work it into a little bit of orange there and mix that color up. Okay, I need a little more red, I think. So although it's kind of, you see on the label that it prints, it actually prints, fire's a little darker. Bear with me, guys. I'm on like day 16 in a row with no day off. I, I think it's even more than that. I just got done with like three boot camps. So if I stutter, <laughs> that's why. I'm not drunk, everybody. I'm just tired, okay? All right, so then I'm just going to kind of work in. I'm doing the deep red, and I mix the orange a little bit. You can see a different shade came from that. Now, if you continue to poncy, 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 and keep going and keep doing it when it's wet, you're eventually just going to start pulling it up. So I just want you to lay the color down and kind of move on, okay? And that's mixing that. Uh, and then I think I'm going to go just to like a plain orange. So this one's mixed. So I'll put that aside. So you'd have to clean them, guys, between. So it's good to get a few sets. That's my summer sun. But I'm going to go right to the orange. And not too thick, guys. Ponce it out, okay? You don't want it real thick. Remember, we have to have the smooth for screen printing. So we really want that to be smooth. And putting some great, you know, we're just working in the color. Now I'm going to go to the marigold. Ah, that was exactly what you don't want to do. Okay. Did you see that? I just dripped that right over. All right, that'll work. So these are all just like, you know, hot colors that are blended. This is marigold now. And I'm really getting the ponds out. See, now if your paint was not dry underneath, this would be an issue. You'd be yanking up paint, okay? So if that starts to happen to you, hit it with the blow dryer right away and come on back. Um, guys, I would not go more than three layers of paint um, completely. I just do two. But if you feel like you want to add, just make sure you blow dry between layers. It comes to a point where you're too thick and you'll kind of get a little bit of a crackle texture in the kiln, which isn't bad. I'll show that to you. I think I have one that has that, but um, just be aware of that. So I don't mind mixing these at all. Now what I'm going to do is go to a medium ponce. And all I'm going to do is kind of blend this a little more. So this is my deep red. And what I do is I kind of let, let the ponce fall. So watch, I don't like sponge. I just like really lightly let it fall, let it fall. See how I'm just letting it fall. And that just kind of gets it, just let it fall and let it be. See? Okay. And then I actually do that with like every single color. So I've got the deep red in here. Pull it out now. I know it doesn't look like much now, my young Jedi's, but it will. And then I just kind of just that little bit. See, just letting it a little bit of color fall. You can go up and there's no wrong way to do it. The only wrong way to do it is if you don't let it dry. So I know it looks blotchy, but it's going to look amazing. Okay. Um, and so we need some more down here. I think I'm going to bring in, I'm going to put dark blue down here. 
And did I already paint that part? I did. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of blow dry this. So I've got deep red, mixing the deep red into the orange. I actually mixed it over here, put it down, then into the orange, right guys? And then mix the orange with the marigold and then just go marigold by itself. Do you see the transition there? So it's the color, deep red. The next color is gonna be orange. Before I go orange, I mix a little of the deep red with the orange and then it's solid orange. My next color is gonna be marigold. So I mix a little orange with the marigold and then it's solid marigold. And that way it will give you a nice gradient of color. So I'm just kind of blending this so it doesn't look super, super duper blotchy. All right, now the paint is already starting to dry in here, so it's getting sticky. So um, I'm gonna show you guys. If I went up here in this corner, see, it's gonna, it's starting to pull up. I don't know if you can see that on camera. You might not be able to, but it's starting to pull up a little bit. And this right here is looking a little blotchy to me. I know you guys noticed that. So I'm just gonna let it be because it's starting to pull up, and then I can always fix that. Um, you know, when after I blow dry it and get into those areas. Um, yeah, so super cool, huh? All right, let's let that be for right now. What I'm going to do, actually, I'm not going to let it be. I'm going to blow dry this to make it dry so we can add our sun and then our streaky, streaky sky and then our landscape. Okay, guys, I'm all dry now. So I'm going to get ready to add my sun and my kind of streaky rays. Um, one thing to notice, let's look at this. I just knocked it on the table after I blow dry it on the way back. So if you knock it or scratch it, um, it will, um, yeah, it's just gonna show the glass that's underneath. So I would take a little paint and, and heal it. Now, I, pro I bet you guys can't see this on camera, but there's very, very tiny cracks in the area where I went with the boom, 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 and it was a little too thick. So try to stay at like two layers, guys, and then just make some accents for the third layer. This is okay. There, it, there is a spectrum here. So these little cracks right here, guys, they will go ahead and just fuse down smooth, but I'm talking about a big ridge of like a huge glob of paint. We won't be able to screen print. Um, and embrace that if it happens because it's a super cool look. Um, so don't worry about that. All right, here we go. First thing we're gonna do is do the sun. Remember the sun, guys? This was just holding my paint ponces. And that is right there, right behind the tree. And I want it low, okay, so it's a sunset. So I'm gonna take the large ponce and what I'm gonna do is take the summer sun with an actual regular, this is just a cheap paintbrush from Michaels. You know, those ones they have a pack of 10 for like $3. It's just super cheap. And I'm just gonna paint it on here because I don't want too much paint. So if I dip, I'm gonna glob it and I'm gonna cause it to crack. Now, sometimes my son have my new sons have like minute little um, like a crackle texture, and I actually love it when that happens. And um, so sometimes I, I will go a little thicker on this, but you'll see, you'll see how yours come out. Okay, so there's my yellow. All right, and now what I'm going to do is take the orange, and I'm going to paint it in kind of a radial pattern going around, right on the edge of the poncy ponce. These are really called ponces, guys. I didn't make that up, but when you look at it on the website, just say sponge, but they really are called ponces. I forgot who told me that, um, but okay. So right around the edge, so I got that different color. You could go more and more and more. It just depends what you want. First thing I'm gonna do is test that bad boy. So I go right over here to my paper and then I hit it just a little bit. Look at that with the orange on the outside. Amazing, okay. So that I get the excess paint off too. So I'm gonna make sure that's okay. Now I'm gonna go like I low, I like my son low, okay? So I'm gonna take my son and I just put the ponds down and then push it with the stick, okay? And then see, it's kind of oozes out a little bit. That's what you want. And then there's my son. Yay, Tanya. Okay, now the streaky rays, check this out. I am going to, now I actually did get a super, if you go fast, you get like less cratery, but if you go like real slow like I did, you get like this crater kind of texture and I love that for the sun, okay? So this is just a little paint palette. Watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put marigold in here now and streak it in here. So let me get my butt on camera here off the glare. I'm gonna take some of this paint, I won't nearly use this much, but just so you can see it, and I'm gonna put it in a line on here, okay? Uh, I think I'm just gonna go with the one color so it doesn't get too messy. So 
Then what I do is take a barbecue skewer. You can use this one, the six inch ones, whatever you want, but this is six inches. So you might want to get the longer ones. And I take the skewer, dip it in there and I roll it guys. Okay. Now this is going to be a decent amount of paint on here. So roll it on there. I roll it all the way around 360 degrees, pull it up. I've got this for later, I'm putting it off camera right now. And you can see there's, it's on the skewer. So I'm just going to kind of dab out the extra. Yeah, it's not too bad. I take both hands now and I'm going to go across the piece. I don't want this to look like, you know, a stripe pattern. I want to be offset. So I'm going to come over here, then I'm going to go over here. And so check it out. All right. So I just, now of course, is this, it's not going to hit, it's not going to be a straight line because the skewer isn't straight. And so it kind of breaks up, which is what you want. You can bend the skewer a little bit to give yourself, you know, if I got to hit that area, see how I'm bending this just a little bit. And then I actually do this whole, I actually do this holding the piece in one hand and then I do it with the other, but I don't want to do that because you guys won't be able to see. So kind of over here, back and forth. I'll do this with one hand. That looks too liney. Now I'm going to go dip again, dip and roll. Okay, there's a lot on there. Just kind of take it off. You can always use more. You can always dip it back in there and then come right down. All right. So when I'm putting the rays on, I'm kind of just rolling the stick. All right. It's like a roll. It's like a dip and roll, dip and roll. Okay, ready? Dip and roll, dip and roll, you know, and gets it on there. You can kind of, I see that I'm scarce up here. So I'll just put a couple dabs. You know, the stick is bendable. Now, I definitely want to go right across the sun. So I'm just using marigold. You guys can use other colors, but um, this way I have the background that's super colorful. It looks dull now, but wait till that firing schedule. It won't be. Now see how I'm kind of going back and forth because just got some sun rays over the sun. Okay, just over the sun there. Dip and roll, dip and roll over the sun, boo, boo, boo. Okay, and then so on. And so I'm missing some right there. Uh, I don't even know if I, yeah, maybe a little bit. I don't know, I get a little excited with the dip and roll, so I need to kind of chill. Yeah, see, that's too thick now. Now I don't like it, all right. Now, once I have that done, if you're following along, let's recap quickly. One, primer first, primer with a sand or a white big mouth paint, blow dry. Two, add your color. Add your color, nice and even, nice and smooth. Blend the colors, okay? Blow dry. If you're gonna go to a third layer, just have those be the accents, okay? Which is the sun and the rays right here. Um, and so now what I'm going to do is I like to take, remember that ponds that you just did with the sun? It's still over here. So definitely buy like two or three sets, guys. And then I just dip it again after. This is optional, but I just want to make sure that sun really shows through, okay? It's all right, there we go. Now, what I'm going to do is put that landscape in here. Let's remind everybody what that is. There's somebody talking outside, guys. Sorry if you can hear that, that we've, we are in a big business complex. Okay, so there's my sun right here behind my tree low, and then here's a little foreground. Now, when I do the foreground, what I do is I use the medium ponds, everybody. Everybody stop, drop, and pick up your medium ponds. Too bad that didn't rhyme, that would've been cool. All right, dark blue is what I use. I'm also using almost these same exact colors in the next one too, but dark blue, who would've thunk it? Um, been using a ton of it lately, especially when you see that bird branch one. My God, is that gonna sell for you guys? Guys, this is sense. One big mouth paint. Get six of them. They will last you a lot of plates, guys. Are you kidding me? And, uh, you know, the simple screens, that's kind of just your overhead if you're sellers. I always like to talk to you guys because, you know, that's how I made my career and that's how I want to help you guys now. Um, by the way, if you have missed it, I have a free uh, thing on the Internet on aaglass.com that says how to sell your artwork. It's a formula that I used. Um, back when I was selling, uh, I've been, I've had a very big uh, seller's career, guys, okay? So I'm happy to help everybody. Um, I have done, you know, the carnival life of doing all those shows. I know they're grueling on you guys. I used to do 20 a year, and then I went to uh, just gallery work, and my work was in over 100 galleries across the U.S., 
Um, and that's kind of how I got my start and we had a building and people cold working for me and so that was okay until I decided that I needed to share everything with everybody, <laughs> okay? All right, so anyways, check that out. It's how to price your artwork and I even have a formula and a cost analysis sheet on there and I hope that helps uh, some people. All right, now I've got the blue on here and what I'm gonna do with this ponce is I'm gonna roll it, okay? I'm not gonna ponce, ponce, ponce. I kind of want a different look. So the way I work, guys, is I gotta turn this uh, like that and see I'm gonna go into the paint so let me just get that out of the ah that's all right it's just a demo right okay I want to make sure you guys see it on camera and I'm gonna roll the ponds like kind of like into a landscape kind of thing here all right so I don't want it to be spongy see how I'm rolling it and then I just kind of you know it's not a straight line because one of landscapes a straight line no way okay so I'm kind of going up and then I'm kind of going down just like that okay you can also do this for water and that's looking a little watery here so I, I don't know I think I want more earth than water so I'll just kind of straighten that out there we go okay and then I'm adding this make sure that the paint underneath is dry everybody I don't want that ponce look right here so I'm just rolling it and rolling it and rolling it hey check it out that's it okay so let me give you a word of advice, something that I discovered. Well, you know, I didn't discover it. I knew it was going to happen, but I made a mistake, okay? What you guys want to do is before we pop this in the kiln and get that piece of Tecta, so here's my finished thing, I want to make sure that all the paint is off the back, everybody, because we are backing this up with clear glass. So guess what? If you have a big paint smudge across here and then you back it up with clear glass, guess what's going to happen? It's going to fuse in. You're going to be able to see it. You will not like it. So if you're using a piece of another piece of opal as your base, I guess it really doesn't matter. You could cheat that way, but I like to use clear uh, because it's cheap and that's just what I do. All right. So here's this is I'm going to take a piece of clear and put that underneath. And guys, make sure it's all lined up. And you are going to follow the full fuse schedule that is in the newsletter, okay? And I'll tell you what, I'll also put it in the description at aeglass.com. That way, for those of you who say, I don't want to have your newsletter, then you still don't have an excuse not to do this because I will put it in the description on the video page. If you're watching the video right now, you are on the video page and all you have to do is scroll down to the description. And while you're scrolling on down, you can scroll on down to the supply list, okay? All right, guys. So we're gonna take this to a full fuse and we're gonna go up high. We're gonna go 1500 and hold it for 10. We can really get the paints to mature at that level and wait to see how vibrant these are. Uh, it's unbelievable. So let's put this in the kiln. I've got a fired version, obviously, and then I've got a dry version. So let's see what this looks like um after we full fuse this guys this is a full fuse everybody oh my gosh we're back oh my gosh here we go how quickly that was <laughs> unfortunately it was that be cool if our kilns work that way all right i just want to show you the before and after can you believe how vibrant this is crazy smooth and beautiful it went from this to this follow my firing schedule guys okay um and also just to show you look how vibrant these, this orange, this is the deep red. I did this exactly the same yesterday. Exactly the same. Deep red into the orange. Mix the red and orange right here. Orange, orange, orange. You can see down here went into um, the marigold. Okay, but I mixed it with a little bit of orange. And then there's your dark blue landscape. And then this is all marigold. See how it really stands out? If you use the same color for your sky streaks, uh, it'll be cooler because then the back will stand out. It kind of denotes foreground and background. I see that there's quite a glare there. Let me try to get it up close. Oh, I did not like filming by myself, guys, but I didn't have a choice today. Okay, there it is. So, and it's dark in here, don't forget. It's about 4.30 here in Florida, so um, pretty awesome. All right, now let's go ahead. Let's get this out of the way. So Okay. So what I would do is, all right, everybody, what I would do is do all your paints first and then you do all your screen printing first. So that would be the most efficient way to work. So, you know, make all these. Now imagine if you had these lined up, just boom, boom, boom. You guys slump them and fire the screen print on at the same time and sell them in your art shows. Are you kidding me, guys? Are you kidding me? These are, can be used for keys, candies, 
So whatever, bathroom, they're only six, they're only six inches. Look how beautiful that is. Look at that, okay? All right, so now, what I, you have to make a decision at this point, okay? So we're gonna screen print this. Now, this just came out fine. You know, this, this edge is just fine, everybody. Two layers of glass, it was cut perfectly, so it came out with rounded edges. This is, I would just rock this out right now and screen print it and then slump it, okay? Some of you might be cold working enthusiasts, all right? Which I sometimes am. Now, at this point, see the edge on this? You know that's very straight, okay? Look at the corners. Oh, there you go. Look at the corners, okay? So at this point, if you wanted to go the distance and, you know, trim this down on a saw or take it down on a lap wheel, uh, you know, if you wanted to do that to get a very straight edge, you could. So you would do that first before screen, screen printing. The good news is that you can actually uh, do that cold working, wash it off, screen print it, slump it, and it's all good. You don't need any more firing. So that's cool. So if you are going to cold work, this would be your time to do it before you screen print because we're going to do the rest all in one firing. But if not, if you're happy with the way this is, and I'm happy with the way this is right now, um, we're just going to go ahead and go right into the screen printing. Okay. Now, uh, before we do that, because I have all the paints out, I, what I want to do is just go right into um, the next project. It's just the bird. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I have my paint ponces on here. Okay. It's just this bird. I just, I can't get enough of it. And Michelle, you're amazing for even coming up with this. It's just so simple yet awesome. There's a little bit of that sun coming, just peeking through, you know, and just that dark. I just love it. I don't know. And the bird is so glossy and that's all in the firing guys. This was slumped at the same time. This is so simple. This could be a whole series for you guys. You guys could do, um, you know, like a bunch of trees, four trees, just make a series. And then this one right here is bird on a wire. Love the screen. So this is actually a bigger screen. It's um, nine by seven. It's on the internet, but I just use part of it. So this actually has a lot more to the image. It doesn't have to fit the plate. Just use the part that you like. And that's what I did. So the difference between these two is this is two layers of paint guys. And I'm going to try to, oh, this glare is terrible. It's killing me. Okay. This is two layers of plate of paint. It's a little more saturated, right guys? That one is bird branch. Just imagine if you had these sitting somewhere to sell guys, these are out of here. Oh, I love it. Okay. And this one, if you guys notice, it's a little duller. You know why guys? I only did one layer with no primer one layer with no primer just sponging you can really see come on get up there baby the white in the through the sponge okay so it kind of gives you an idea so you can see it's a little bit duller obviously but that's only one layer okay so i kind of wanted to show you the difference if you don't prime uh it's a little trickier too because you um the paint's harder to stick to the glass but just so you can see that all Right. Should I just paint? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint the bird one right in front of you. Um, so you guys can get that. If you don't want to, if you don't care about it, or you think you can figure it out on your own, go ahead and skip to the next part, which is the screen printing. But I'm going to paint how I painted this uh, right now for you. So either stick around or skip around. Okay. All right. Here we go. You know what? I'm going to take a quick break, guys, and get some water. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we go. So I'm all primed up. I've got my sand color on here and I blue dry it. We don't need to go through that again. Now what I'm going to do is I've got this dark blue. I've got dark blue and deep red is mostly prominent on this piece. Okay. And then you can see right here, I've mixed the dark blue and the red. And let's bring this back into the camera one more time. See that guys? Come on. That's awesome. Come on. Stop it. All right. Uh, good job, Michelle, sister, Michelle. Um, such a sweet pea. Okay, ready? Here we go. So what I'm going to do is, see how nice it takes it with that primer on? I'm just going to, this is pure dark blue. Now I've got it too thick right there, but I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, smooth it out with the ponds. I got a new ponds, guys, or you would have had to wash it. Um, and you don't want it to be wet. You want these to dry, guys. So you want them to dry because uh, the wet could, would dilute the paint, okay, just like it would with watercolor, all right? 
So I'm just kind of making a very, very thorough, look how I'm not, I'm just super dark blue and just like right about there is good. Covering every nook and cranny, very smooth layer here. Okay, that's pure dark blue. I see a little glob of glue, globby, globby, globo right down here. I don't know, but it's right there with the paint. And I don't know how I got that, but I did it. Get that out, guys, because we want this to be smooth for screen printing. There we go, okay? Now, I took that dark blue and I took that deep red and I mixed it right here, okay? I just took a palette knife and I mixed it. See that, guys? And it made a very deep, obviously, purplish, but I wanted more blue in it color. Isn't that cool? So this will really fire this way, okay? Don't have to worry about reactions with these paints at all. It's just paint and do it. This is just it. Now I've got this kind of really plum, okay? And I'm working it into that line a little bit, going back over a little bit with what I did with the blue, and then beautiful color right there. That's beautiful. All right, so this is the dark blue and the deep red mix. Dark blue, deep red mix, okay? Let's get these lines out of there. Now I'm really lightly ponting to kind of get the lines out of there. Can you guys see that? Super cool, all right? And then I go into the red. Notice I'm not rinsing my ponds. I'm totally fine with using this because I don't care if these colors mix. All right, so the, actually I'm gonna go to the medium no, nah, I'll stick with that. Never mind. Never mind. I changed my mind, guys. That's what I do. Because you know what? I'm creating on camera, and I can't help it, but, uh, you know, what was I, what was I going to say? Uh, I'm creating on camera, so I'm going to change things up as I, as I see fit, because I'm the artist doing this, right, as you guys do. Guys, super cool, right? It's, it's just like a dawn. It's crazy. Uh, okay, so now I've got that deep red mix. The only thing that I'm going to do now is bring in some orangish right through here, and then I'm going to make a sun just peeking out, okay? So let's go ahead and put the sun in first. I still got my summer sun ponds. Sun in first, okay? And, but it's kind of like, it's not a whole sun. It's just like, you know, it's coming, so it's just like glowing. One more time, let me show you guys, okay? See, it's just kind of glowing. Come on. See, it's just barely coming up. That's what we want, just barely coming up, okay? So I'm just going to go down here to the base. I'm going to move this up just a tad so you don't have to see the edge of the frame there. Okay. And then I take this guy and I'm, I do a wide kind of half sun. It's wide. It's because it's just coming. The, you know, the, the glow is just coming here. It's not perfect. It's just you're not making a sun, guys. See how it's just kind of wide? Now I'm going to work that orange in and cover it up a little bit so it does look glowing, okay? So now I'm going to take the orange, and now I'm going to go to a medium-sized ponce. Guys, I know this is confusing, go big, go medium, but you know what? You're just going to know naturally that you have to switch to a, a smaller ponce. Why? Because I don't want to get all this orange, right? So just kind of medium, makes sense. And there's even a tiny guy that I'm going to go into. All right, so now I'm going orange with all this. I'm okay with this mixing with the purple, and... Oh, this is going to be a good one. Darn, this is going to be better than the one that I made yesterday uh, for a sample for you guys. So watch. I'm going over the sun. I'm not covering the sun. I'm going, you know, around the top of it. Okay. And I'm going to let that. See how I just go lighter to kind of blend that right there. You know, it's funny. I got Mark Huff Hufford here now who is just a phenomenal painter. And he's here teaching a 12-person work class. And I just <laughs> laugh at what I'm doing here. And he's in there like, rocking out Picasso stuff, okay? All right, so I've got orange on here. I go back over to my summer sun one more time. Be careful you don't pull up paint. This is starting to get dry already. Oh, I just got something right there. All right, and so I take this and just go over the yellow one more time, lightly. So it gives it that glow, lightly, lightly, guys, okay? And that's it. So I'm done. I'm not even going to put any more accents. I'm not going to blow dry it. Uh, this is just done. You can put wet paint into the kiln, which is cool. This is obviously a single layer, single layer of glass. So what would you need, guys? You would need your backup layer of clear or oval, whatever you so choose. But before I do that, I missed a whole corner. Did you guys see that? Before, you, before I do that, I need to make sure and clean this off the back. Oh, look at this. I didn't even have anything. That was amazing. All right. So I've got my clear... Two layers of glass, full for you schedule, 
I seriously, how long would that take me? If I shut my mouth, which I do do that sometimes, you guys, this would take you 15, 20 minutes. Are you kidding me right now? All right. And then I'm going to plop it into the kiln for a full fuse, right with my other ones. These are six by six, guys. This does not take a lot of room. You're going to have these professional, awesome looking pieces. Okay. All right. So let's take that away. Now I've got two more that I can do, ha ha ha. And then here we go with the results of that. You've got a nice glow up here, okay? It's a super dark, which is what I want because I'm gonna take that bird and come right across there. Now, I went a little far down on my dark blue one yesterday, did I? Let's see, yeah, just a little bit. So if you're going to use this screen, which is so simple, this bird branch, you know, kind of look at it. Let's see if I got it right here. I know I do. I do. Okay. So now I'm going to kind of look. So I'm going to have to come pretty low with that bird. You know, eh, not too bad, guys. Not too bad. Okay. Uh, but that's it. So if you were going to cold work, this is rounded and this is perfectly fine. And if you were going to cold work, now would be the time to do it before you screen. Before you screen, guys. Obviously, if you screen print, okay, you can't cold work because it'll be wet. And then if you fired it after a slump, it would just be a waste of time. I'm giving you a schedule that it will all work in one firing, okay? So now that we've got these, let's do a quick screen print. Uh, and then guess what? That's it. And if you guys like this, let me know on Facebook that you like this. And I'll keep on showing you more paints and screens. And we'll do this, you know, every couple, three weeks maybe. I hate to back myself in the corner because I've got so much going on right now. But um I'll do another one in a couple weeks. I promise you, I will do another one in two weeks of the octopus and the turtle if you guys like this, but I want to hear if you do. All right, let's get on. To, I'm going to clean this junk up and let's get on to the screen printing. All right, guys, before we get to the print, we have to quickly mix the enamel. There's lots of videos. I should say a lot, but three. That's a lot of me doing this for free at aglass.com. It's called Simple Screen Printing with Tanya Viet. But I will do it quickly here as a refresher, as I'm sure thousands of you have not seen that one. Um, so let's do it. I've got Easy Fire Black Enamel. This fires and matures at between 1100 and 1300. So it's a low fire enamel. And I like mine super glossy on top of the plate. So the schedule that I'm going to use with the slump is in the newsletter. And that is 1220 uh for i have to check my notes but i think it's 16 minutes anyways it'll be in there and i'll also put it on the website so this is lead free these are lead free but they're not food safe so if you want to use these decorative trays for food you would have to um do a separate firing before you get to the slump and clear cap that i have a huge thing on this i'm not going to get into it now it's at simple screen it's at aeglass.com and it's uh, simple screen printing with Tanya Via. Just look it under printing glass. It's, it's free. There's two of them, okay? So what I'm going to do, guys, this is the Easy Fire Medium. It's the only thing that works with the enamels. And I'm going to mix this. Masks are on right now, everybody. This is enamels. This has silica and cadmium in them. Everybody must be wearing a mask. It's a real fine dust. You don't want this stuff in your lungs, okay? Now, when you are screen printing, you're going to mix a very thick um, uh, concoction here, okay? So I want it to be like, you know, like when you make fudge and you mix the fudge, if that's what it is. So when I'm screen printing, I like my inks thick. I like a thick mixture. Reason being, guys, if you mix it too thin, it when you go to make a print, it will run underneath the screen, and then you got to wash everything off and do it over again. It's a waste of enamel. Now, I in those free videos, I even show like a video in slow motion of how that is. So we'll show it quickly here, but this is supposed to be a quick video. I, you know what? I just don't know. Well, I can't do that. I just have to teach, and I got to teach well. So I don't like to rush stuff, you know because, um, you know, some people say I chitter chatter too much and uh, I just say, uh, I don't really care what you say. <laughs> so I'm thorough in what I do. There's always a mute button on the TV, right guys? Uh, so yeah, I'm thorough uh, in what I do and um, you know, I just want you guys to learn and so you can, uh, you know, I do this because I want everyone to uh, just enjoy making glass or, and just have that time. Everybody needs that time to, chill you know and uh, forget about everyday life and stress so 
uh, and make great art and hopefully you guys can make some money too. That would be nice, wouldn't it? All right, so I'm doing this right now and this is the best way that I can show you. It's black, so it's hard to see. When you pull up a stream of it and you let it drip into the enamel, if it melts in right away, if the stream that's on your, uh, you can use a popsicle stick, this is a uh, stainless paddle. If it melts right into the enamel that's already in the condiment cup, it's too thin, and which is happening right now. So I'm into a situation of where I have to add more enamel. So just add a little bit at a time. I've got my bag over here, guys, and I don't want to have this dust flailing everywhere. So I'm just going to go up to the side here and add a little bit more. I don't have an exact recipe, guys. I just mix it to what I feel, okay? Um, just thick, everybody, okay? Not thick like it's actual icing on a cake, but close, all right? Also, once you mix this, you can put a lid on it, date it, and it's good for about 40 days. It says 30, but it's 40. That's what I've pushed it to. I work a lot with these enamels, and we are distributors for Easier Fire Enamels, and guys, we have a lot of colors, so who says you gotta print a tree in black? Print it in any of the other amazing colors that uh, we have, okay? Okay, this is good. This is perfect, all right? So it's kind of like taffy. I, oh, I hope you guys can see this. Hold on, let me tilt it. All right, so now I have the stream on there, and it's taken one, two, three, four, five seconds to melt in. One, two, three. So that's what you want. Nice and thick, okay? All right, this is good for a lot of prints. All right, everybody? All right, let's get off. Let me go ahead and get my uh, stuff lined up here, and I'll be right back. All right, here we go with the screen printing. Now, um, you need some blue painter's tape. If When you guys purchase these, we have over 115 designs of these right now. Um, that's crazy. I can't even believe that. But uh, look, look up Simple Screen um, on aeglass.com and you'll find them. There is, this one's kind of stained. Once you use the screen, it's stained, especially if it's black. These will last you hundreds of prints if you take care of them, guys. When you wash the screens, one side here is kind of like a satin, um, you know, finish. And the other side is an obvious dull screen. The print side is the satin, the shiny side. Let's just say the shiny side, okay? So you're gonna print on the shiny side, and then when you wash it, you're gonna wash from the shiny side. Now, all you do is when you wash it, is you just hold it in your hand and let the water run, and you just do this, okay? Um, so we had these packaging made, and there was like 5,000 of them made from the printer, and it said use gaffer's tape on there, and I wish I never said that. Uh, it's a little more expensive, but it's some some manufacturers make it sticky that you could actually rip your screen. So I'm using masking tape now, guys. So even when you get the package, it says gaffer. We're almost done with them, believe it or not, and then I'm going to change it to just masking tape. Uh, the other thing, uh, let's see. So you can either take this piece of glass and straighten it with a T-square so the bottom is straight. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to screen print sitting down on this camera, so I'll do the best that I can. I might have to pull a little closer to me. Uh, this way, you can use a piece of graph paper and just line it up with a line, but you want this to be straight. If it's cockeyed, it's, it's not going to be good, right? So a T-square probably would, would help you guys quite a bit, or just eyeball it like I do. Um, a piece of graph paper will work. All right, so I got my screen. Now, what I have next to me that you cannot see, guys, is a shallow bin of warm water. There's no soap in it. There's nothing in it. You don't need soap or abrasives to clean these screens, guys. Just warm water and let the ink run out. Now, if the enamel starts to, if you're doing a bunch of screen printing, which you're going to be doing at once, I, I would suppose, and if the enamel starts to dry in the screen, what happens is you then have to kind of use a light scrubby, a light scrubby to wash it out, but you're really, you can damage the screen. Um, you know, I've done that, and I've done that with screens, you know, maybe 15, 20 times, but you don't want this blue stuff to start peeling away. So a new trick that I do is I just keep a bin with warm water. As soon as I'm done with the print, I drop it in the water. This way it stays moist the whole time until I'm ready to clean the screens out. Okay, everybody? Put that bin there. Don't forget, you'll go just put it to the side. It'll have enamel in it. It's going to dry in the holes, guys. We don't want that, okay? So use that bin. All right, here we go. Um, this one's kind of cut up because I had another one on here before we decided to start. I love this tree. I really love bare dead trees. I always have. So I'm lining this up right now. I'm just eyeballing it. Now, the top of the design goes right almost to the end of the tile. And uh, I'm going to show you a trick that I've just discovered. See, it's good to go back and watch 
Re and just to watch the new videos I have, guys, because I'm always working on making things better. Um, so remember that other tile that I had, the bird one? I'm going to make myself, because it's so close to the edge, I'm going to make myself what I call a runway. I'm going to pull this down to myself a little bit closer. All right. And now that way I can put the screen on and actually tape it to this guy and not be crowded up here. Okay. I hope that makes sense. All right. So this tree, I'm going to put like right where the, oh, guys, this is so easy. I, I, I want everyone to use these because I think they're so cool and so easy. And I worked out the firing schedule for you. So there's nothing you should be afraid of guys. Okay. Now I hold this down. So what I was saying was it's so close up here that I need, you know, to tape up here. So I'm going to, I need a little runway. So this is six millimeter thick. And so is this, it just, it's so nice. I can just tape it to that tile. Um, obviously you would run out of tiles if you had to print every single one. So just make a dummy tile of two pieces of clear and full fuse it. So it's the same thickness of this and then you'll have no problem. All right, now I've got myself some room here. I got a little runway, because I'm gonna put the ink right on the edge right there. Do not tape both ends. If you tape both ends, when you go down, you're gonna get a bubble, okay? Just leave the other one loose. It's hold with one hand, and go ahead and squeegee with the other. We also have these six inch squeegees, which are awesome, and they're cheap. You can get those for the larger screens. These are super convenient. But for today, I'm going to use the four ounce vinyl squeegee. These are a few bucks, guys. Get a couple. It's nice to have a couple when you don't want to wash stuff right away. So have a basin for your screens and have a basin for your tools and just start throwing stuff in there, okay? Now, I am very thrifty with my enamel, okay? I want to do a lot of prints. And this is super, super forgiving, all right? So here's the thing that I can tell you. Go ahead at a 45 degree, we're going to come down like this and print, okay? If your squeegee is down too far, all you're going to do is wipe the paint right over the top and it's not going to get through the holes, okay? So if you go to erect, it'll go chatter. Chattering is da 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 and you're going to see those lines in the print when you lift the screen up. So 45 degree, two hands, one hand, whatever you want, and firm, not light, firm. Like a 1 to 10, give me a 7, guys, okay? Not so much where you try to rip the darn thing, it won't rip, but, you know, and, and practice where you do it. That's a seven. Okay. Now I'm going to put the ink right up here. I have to assess the design. This isn't a huge design like the bird we're doing next is such a small area. It's just going to be a little bit of enamel, but you don't want to run out of enamel either. So let's kind of, you know, you're going to judge that anything that's left on the screen, I always put back in the container uh, because why wouldn't you? Why would you throw away that enamel, right? All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Make sure that your enamel is thick enough. And right when I'm about to do this, I lost my spatula. Where are you? Let me go ahead and get a palette knife, guys. Sorry about that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, and another thing, I keep the party going, don't I? Another thing is, guys, you do not want to uh, pour. Pour onto the screen. No, no, no. Use a palette knife. Use a pal popsicle stick is fine, everybody, okay? So it's not a lot. You have to think about... You know, this isn't a huge area right here. Oh, this is perfect, 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 okay? So I'm right on top of the glass. See how I'm just putting it right around there? It seems like because I'm talking so much that this is complicated. For those of you that have not done this before, you know darn well it's not, guys. Or have not done it before, I just want to be thorough. And for those of you who have done it before, you know how easy this is. I'm going to put a little bit down here. Cause there's some tree and there's a lot of trunk right there. I got a feeling I'm going to run out. See where the trunk is? So I'm going to go a little heavy in the middle up here. Now, just a little bit guys. Look how much I have left. I didn't even mix a full ounce. Okay. This is messy by the way. Wear gloves if you want. If you get paint on your hands, it's going to uh, stain and then it takes like five washings to get it out. But all right. Um, so let's put this over to the side. Let's do this now guys. Print this guy, and then I do not lift up the screen. I want you to make sure that you hit every area. It's very forgiving, and I'm going to show you. Because if you lift up the screen, and you didn't get the whole area, and you go, oh, I missed it, and you go back down with the screen, if there's paint underneath here, you're going to smear the whole darn thing, okay? So we're going to do a final check before we lift the screen. Once you lift the screen, that's it. That's it. Okay, now if you have register marks here, I have done three tiles in a row successfully. This takes some practice. In other words, 
print, lift the screen up, put the tile under, print. So three times as far as I've been able to go before it smears, okay? All right, here we go. So I got my hand down here. I'm paying attention to what's going on. 45 degree angle. It's going to take two swipes. So 45 degrees, guys, and come on down, okay? Awesome. All right, that's one. And now I'm going to come over here to the other part. And that's two, all right? Now, I check, okay? What I mean is, did I miss any areas here? I'll be able to see right on the screen, and I didn't, okay? I don't think I did. I think there might be, I can't tell if that's a glare. I did maybe miss. Okay, let's say that you missed, okay? There's a lot of excess enamel on here, and I just need a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and scoop it back into the jar and leave a little bit on the squeegee. Guys, I'm going to tell you this. You'll get better at this, all right? Your first print isn't going to be perfect, but let it go. Don't keep rinsing off enamel and wasting money. Let it go. So I see there's a little area right here that I missed. I do not print the whole thing. You risk the, the drama of double printing. In other words, you move over a little bit, you move the screen, and then it makes like a, you know, a double image and it's fuzzy. You want it sharp. I got a little bit on right there. I just missed that little area. I'm just going to go over that little area. That's it. So easy, okay? Make sure you're working on a newspaper or something. Ready? This is it, guys. When I lift it, that's it. There's no more up here. I usually take the excess, but I actually got it pretty good. I, I That's pretty good, all right? So lift it up. Oh, yeah, okay? Now, I smudged it. One area right there. It's when I dropped the ink. When I first put the ink down, I dropped it into the print area. Guys, would I print this over? Heck no. It's perfect. It's sharp, sharp as can be. So what I would do is just take one of those rubber tip thingies, guys. You know what I'm talking about, the rubber tip uh, tools. Uh, they're called the wipeout tools. And I would just go right up here and I would just wipe that out with a tool, of course, not my fingers. But, well, that worked too. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Shape it up with the tool. It's fine. I got a little bit on the side because I was messy. All right. And awesome sauce. So this is going to go in and put on my mold and I'm going to slump and fire the enamel and it's going to come out awesome. I want to show you this is wet enamel and this is fired. Cut it out, guys. It's freaking awesome. Are you kidding me right now? It's the same. Okay. That's a good firing schedule right there. I, I am giving myself a pat on the back uh, for that because I wanted to get the enamel glossy and slump. Right over that sun. Stop it, guys. You're gonna put you're gonna sell the heck out of these, okay? Now, I do not go back down with the screen. I remove this. Okay? And then where do I go, everybody? I take this screen, I go right into my bin of water. Right into the bin. Right into the bin. Okay? And it just soaks there forever and ever. You're not gonna damage the screen. Remove my tape. And this is ready to slump. I got a little bit on the side, but this is ready to slump. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go right into the bird, okay, just to show you again. Now that's actually, um, I mean, that's a lot of area, a lot of prints. Oh, God, this is, I keep doing this, guy. I'm going to show you some stuff at the end. I can't stop doing this technique. I love it. So simple. It doesn't always have to be hard. All right, now I've got my... My tile, I want you guys to clean these with alcohol and water. I'm on camera, it's messy. I'm not concentrating on that, I'm concentrating on teaching. So you can see I'm getting the black and yellow everywhere. Okay, now I've got this guy right here. This is bird on a wire. All I did was flip it. The sun is now up here. Bird on a wire, oh, I love that one. Bird on a wire, okay. But this guy, we're gonna do this lonely guy right here. He's just waiting for the dawn or the sunset, either one I guess, but I like the dawn better. Okay, make sure this is straight. T-square, everybody. Got your water. Got your bearings here, okay? I take my screen. All right, I don't need a runway here because I have room for the tape. It's basically for the tape, everyone. All right, now, I see that this is right at the edge, and I don't like coming this way. I'm going to turn my tile. It's more comfortable for me. So you guys got to figure out what's comfortable for you. All right, now, I would actually probably cut this with scissors. This is a little bit too much runway for me, but... Uh, let's go with it. So I don't like to print from an edge whenever start from an edge. It's it's harder because the glass is rounded, right, guys? I like to start from a non-rounded edge. I'm not saying it can't be done. There's plenty of times where I've had to do it, um, but then, you know, that's it. You just you, When you get better, you're better at it. That's it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I need, there's a lot of extra room here. I would probably cut that down with scissors, but I think I will use my Runway, which I just screen printed. Oh, shoot, didn't I? All right, that's all right. We'll rock this out anyway. All right, I got my tape. 
So I'm going to go this way with my squeegee, okay? Now, this is not, where do I want that birdie head? Right there. This is not a, uh, a, a big image, guys, okay? It's not a lot of ink, so don't waste it. Right on top of the paper, make sure that that's matted down. This is so easy, everyone. You're going to see how easy it was. Don't tape this on. You don't want to bubble. I always smooth. Makes me feel better. I'm on the satin side of the glass, not the screen side. Make sure you tape down, everybody, okay? This gets exciting, and then you start making these little mistakes because you just want to get it done. But All right, so I've got, I go, I put the ink down as wide as the widest part, which is the bird head, okay? This is more than enough. And if you guys love this, please let me know on Facebook that you love it and that you want the turtle and the octopus next week because I've added frit and texture into the paints, which is, will be another step up. Um, and I've also used multicolors with the screen printing. So if you guys like this, maybe we'll do this every few Sundays or so. Um, but I got to know because my schedule is nuts. So I want to know. I don't want to do it if you guys aren't going to watch it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here it is. Back to my squeegee. I didn't even clean it off because I'm using black. Uh, you know, oh, oh, that's bad, but I'm doing it anyway. Taking it down. That's probably too much ink. I'm watching as I'm printing, and I'm just paying attention. That's it. Off there. Okay. Did I get it? Yeah, I got that one. That one's good. Oh, so cool. So cool. Sorry about the glare on there, guys. So cool. So cool. I missed. No, I didn't. It's good. All right, so let's turn this so you guys can see it right side up. Okay. And then, where is it? There you go. Guys, so easy. Okay, so now I'm going to slump this and be done with it. Now, I'm going to clean my tools, right? I've got the screen that i got to put into the bucket right away. If I'm going to start screen printing, otherwise, it doesn't matter. Take the tape off. So this is the glossy side. I'm just going to go to the sink. And I'm just going to let the water run on it, okay? And you'll, guys, these will last for a lot of prints if you do that. Lots of prints, okay? And lots and lots, like lots and lots and lots, like 100, all right? Uh, what else do I want to tell you guys? I think that's it. Do you guys want to see a couple more? Like I said, I don't have an assistant, so hold on. I'm talking, I'm talking. Oh, I got more. I even got some in the kiln, everybody. Do you guys love how I just keep talking? Okay. I mean, I keep talking. I'm not even on camera. Assuming that you are entertained, but you're probably not. Here's a, a really cool, this is a dark blue octopus that I did. The background's awesome, guys. It's got like that texture. It's getting super dark here now in Florida. It's like 630 or something. Okay, I can teach you that. Look at this cool one with this Nautilus shell. I can just keep going with these. Okay, how about this one? All right, how about this? This is the discus fish, a fish printed in real teal. Love this one. Uh, lighthouse on dark blue, printed in white. That's opaque white, uh, easy fire enamel. And I have this super cool one. This would be awesome for soap, guys. All right, that's a little uh, fish pool, something like that, circle of fish, I can't recall. 100 designs, lots of enamels and colors. And um, don't forget about your ornate turtle, which is fast approaching my second favorite. I love the birds. Guys, what else do I got to tell you? Firing schedule. In the newsletter for easy reference, save the newsletter, guys. I know that we send a lot of newsletters it's because we love you, okay? And then we will also put it on Facebook, the simple screens. We will not run out. It's an infinite amount. We have thousands. We burn them here in another warehouse. We have a huge printing department here. Uh, so we make them fresh. We make them fresh. It's artwork, and um, we burn those here. And what else, guys? Um... Your enamels are by glass.com. Any orders over $200 uh, get free shipping except for half sheets of glass, but the other glass will ship 10 by 10. St stop it. You guys, stop it. All right, I'm going to go because you have a lot of stuff to do, and I will see you guys soon. Give me your feedback. Thanks for your support. Um, it's because of your support that we keep on going, and it's because of your support that I feel I need to keep on giving, and I will until the day I die. How about that? Okay, see you guys later. Bye-bye.